Hello and welcome to another video. You should actually hear me when I say this. I'm going to give you the example that while I was eating my dinner, the Lord gave to me. Because this is what I hear. I hear that you were never supposed to be a part of them. And when the Lord said you were never supposed to be a part of them, I see one day, one day you wear the crucifix. One day you're talking about the goodness of God. The next day I see your tail literally going down the halls at work. One day you're talking about I prayed about it and you're talking about the goodness of God. The next day you're talking about trying to trip up somebody else's husband. We're all confused. Either you're going to be a part of the world or you're not. Or you're going to be separate. And this was the example that I was getting. And when I heard separate, I was reminded. The Lord gave me, and I've shared this with you guys. Um, it was during a time of fasting. And I had a dream this night. This one particular night, I had a dream. And in the dream, it was very like, I want to call it scary. I'm just like, Lord, why does this keep happening? I get up. And I record the dream. I go back to sleep. When I go back to sleep, I have a dream. And inside of the dream, I then have a vision. And in this vision, the Lord shows me myself as a teenager doing something that I didn't have no business doing. I don't know if I told you what I was doing, but I was hopping across the bed. And I saw the person who was in the bed. I was hopping across the bed. And I was tee -hee -hee, tee -hee -hee, tee -hee. That's what I was doing. But it wasn't funny to me when I saw it in this vision. Because what the Lord was showing me was he was showing me from a perspective up here. What he was seeing when he looked down there upon me. And I remember getting up from my bed after the Lord showed this to me. And falling down on my knees and crying out, Lord, I am sorry. And I know this is not how I'm behaving right now. But I repent. I I repent. I turn. Even from the direction that the 15, 16 year old was going that you showed me just then in that vision. And I remember in that vision, the Lord highlighted very clearly to me, separate. Separate. I will separate the sheep from the goat, but you need to separate. This is what he reminded me as he showed me that you were never supposed to be a part of them. I'm totally confused. When I'm in your presence, I'm confused. Like I said, one day you have the crucifix on. The next day, I see your entire behind. And let's go a bit deeper. We're going to talk about a few things here. I came to you the other day, and as you can see, it's like... It's like we can't even... I want to do conversation for you guys talking about marriage and... We can't even get to the harder conversations because we are still, we're backpedaling. And a lot of you won't change. I realize that. Some of you are going to hear this message. You're going to think I'm completely crazy. And you're going to continue to do the things that you want to do. But some of you are going to hear this message and you're actually going to take the necessary steps to change. I told you guys all the time, it's videos like this that help me to change my life. That's why I make them. You know, back then, therapy wasn't like the cool thing to do. And now I know it's completely unnecessary, a waste of money. Because you're not going to be able to get therapy. You're not going to be able to counsel your way out of disobedience. Some of the things that we will come up on that are happening even right now, you don't want to be found on the wrong side. Yet some of you are clearly just, you know, the amount of young girls that I have to tell throughout the day, put your legs down, close your legs, let's sit like a lady. One little girl had an outfit so bad. And when I say so bad, so much was exposed. And this was two days in a row. This, I didn't think that the outfit from yesterday could get any worse. But today the outfit got worse. That I aimed to see if I had like a larger shirt to put on over her. Everything was out. 
And you'd think, you know, having a male teacher in the classroom is the problem. No, you're the problem. You who are purchasing the clothes for the daughter, you're the problem. What was going through your mind when you purchased this for your daughter? You wish that you were her? You wish that when you were her age, perhaps when you had the same size body as she or whatever, that you could wear some of these things? And then you're perplexed. The women are perplexed. As to why the men are doing X, Y, and Z, even to the younger children. And you're sending your daughter out of the house looking like this. I'm completely confused. I make a joke with the kids and tell them I didn't sign the belly button waiver and everybody thinks it's funny. But in all seriousness, grown person to grown person, I shouldn't have to say this. Why am I seeing belly buttons? Why am I seeing behind of the children? You know why I'm seeing behind of the children? Because mama, you don't mind people seeing your behind. And it's disturbing. But what do you think that you're going to get? What are you trying to get? Where are, you go where are we going? We're not going anywhere. We're just out of order. And I say we're. I've taken my. I have taken the word of the Lord to separate. Very seriously. At all costs, I'll keep myself separate. Lose a job, lose whatever. I'll keep myself separate. But I can tell you this, it is very hard. You know why? Because it's everywhere. No longer do the kids do like exercises. The kids now do yoga. Well, why hasn't someone said that yoga is not an exercise? Why hasn't someone said that yoga is doing poses to a God? Why hasn't someone said that? Why are we doing that here? Please tell me. We've become like them. You weren't supposed to be a part of the system. We've become like them. I can't tell the difference between you and them. They can't tell the difference between us. You're the Christian and you're cursing just as much. You are the Christian. I have seen it. You are the Christian. And the only reason I know that you're supposed to be the Christian is because you got a crucifix around your neck. But when I hear the words that come out of your mouth, I am not, I'm no longer confused about what's really going on here. I'm very well aware of what you actually are. And a Christian, a follower of Christ, you're very far from it. it. You know, I'm not really, I don't really watch TV and stuff like that. You guys already know this. So it really, like when I see some of these things, I like legit be confused. Legit confused. I don't know how, like, I just, I don't know how, I don't know how I, we can't, we just really can't even, we can't tell you apart. One day you're wearing the crucifix. The next day you're telling me about your, what do you call it? Your, your birth sign. I'm so confused as to how you don't know that this is not the language of a follower of Christ. It's unfortunate that. You know, I don't think you're that confused. Like, I think you think you're doing the right thing. And nobody has told you that it's wrong. But this is the reason why I really came here today to talk to you. This is the worst one of them all. And I say the worst one of them all. They're all pretty bad. But this, because of what we talk about a lot here on this channel, this is really what I started talking about before I even made this channel. Some of you guys know I used to be on Snapchat and I used to talk about relationships there before I got married. Because the Lord told me nobody is going to believe you when you tell them how this thing actually came about. So start now. And I started telling people that the Lord said I would get married on X, Y, and Z day before I even had a boyfriend. I wasn't rolling around in the bed with nobody. My husband and I did not. We didn't even. Girl, no. No. And I didn't realize why the Lord was having me to speak about it. But it's very clear to me now. I said that to say, 
this subject is something that I've been talking about for a long time and it too is increasingly getting worse and I'm just so grateful like I said earlier for the grace of God that perhaps it was still this bad then and I was being shielded from how bad it really is because my desire was really and truly to live for God and to come into a deeper understanding of what that actually means. Not be following, say you're following Christ for 10 years and you're still doing things like cursing. And you're still doing things like fornicating. And you're still doing things like masturbating. And you've been following Christ, you know, for 10 plus years. And you still take no time to read your Bible. I'm confused. Why did you decide to follow? See, what you don't know is actually you're not even following. Because if you were really following Christ for real, some of those things would change. They would have no, there is no room for them to stay. There's no room for you to stay the same. You know, sometimes I really want to do something. I really want to say something. And the Lord begins to correct me. And I'm like, Lord, but they don't want doing the wrong thing. And he is correcting me. You can't stay the same. But some of you refuse to change. You refuse to separate. So when the separation is being made, when God is really making the separation, because you won't separate, you won't be separated. You'll be together with those whom you love. Because you want to be seen. You'll be together with those whom you love. And what I was saying was, you know, this was the most disturbing thing. You know, you young women who think it's funny to um, dress in a way and to entice men. And some of these men are people's husbands. I want you to watch out. And I'm not even speaking on my own behalf. I'm speaking of the behalf of some of the things that I've actually seen. I want you to watch out. Because you guys have no idea what you, you just think you look so cute. You just think you look so cute and that everybody needs to see it all. When you walk out of the house and some of these clothes that you guys are wearing, you walk out of the house with the intention to be seen, with the intention to cause someone else to stumble. And what do I mean by cause someone else to stumble? Causing someone else to turn their head and look at your behind is a stumble. And I tried to go and look for a scripture talking to you about stumbling and there were so many you know what it tells me because one of the scriptures about if your eye causes you to stumble it says to gouge that thing out every single scripture that i read about stumbling was nothing good so what does that tell me to cause someone to stumble even is nothing good it's nothing to be praised for so what do you think that makes you what category do you think you're in when you're causing someone else to stumble and you can say all the things that the world says if you want to. You can say, you know, it's my body or these are my eyes and I can look. You can do all that. But know that there are spiritual implications to your actions at the end of the day. And I keep on talking about this. The no clothes, like put some clothes on. And it's crazy that I got to say this now. This has to be said now. It's not about me saying it. It's crazy that this has to be said now. Put some clothes on your daughters. Because lest something happen to them because of the way that you're dressing them, who do you th where do you think that blood goes? On whose hands? On yours. Because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're not being a good steward over motherhood. You're not being a good steward over your household. But as I was saying, you young women who think that it's funny to cause men to stumble and not knowing that some of those men are people's husbands, rather he said it, rather it was not whatever. You think it's funny? Someone literally came up to me, me, someone's wife of seven years and decided that it was appropriate to say that somebody's husband was making a comment towards you. That's totally inappropriate, but you keep on with this behavior. You don't know who you don't know who you're messing with. And I say you don't know who you're messing with. You don't know if the wife understands what covenant is. I made a video for you guys about this a while ago. You don't understand if the wife knows what covenant is and you simply don't know 
who the spouse is. You know, every I'm not even talking about just the followers of Christ. Some of these people practicing full on witchcraft. And I know someone personally who lost their lives messing around with the witch's husband. You thought she was just an old lady and you didn't know she was practicing full blown witchcraft. And the lady is literally dead now. And her children are here without a mother. Because you think it's funny. It's not funny. And how can God, God is not going to back you up doing stuff that you don't have no business doing. Yes, his grace is sufficient, but some of you guys are in full blown rebellion against God. You think it's funny? That's not funny. I put on some pants the other day that I got from Ross and I didn't try them on before I left the store. I tried them on. I looked in the mirror. I tried them on. I said, oh, these cute. But the ooh, these cute that I got from them, I knew I'd need to put, hang them right back up in this closet. Until I could wear a jacket that actually passed my butt. And when I wore those pants, guess what? The jacket passed my butt. I'm not walking out of this house to be seen by other people. And then you're mad. And then you're saying something when people do see that which you intended to show them in the first place. You're tr causing other people to stumble. Moreover, you're trying to manipulate situations, people, and outcomes. You're practicing witchcraft yourself and you don't even know it. You lost your mind. A lot of you. A lot of you have lost your mind. You think it's funny. And it's crazy because these same people, you really want love yourself. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You really want love yourself. And you, the way that you're going about it, by trying to lure and trap other people, you're going about it all the wrong way. You'll never get it. And when you do get it, if you happen to get it, if you happen to manipulate the situation and outcome and get that which you were trying to get, the stuff that you're doing right now will cause you to never be able to enjoy it. You'll never be able to enjoy marriage knowing what you have done to other people's husbands. You'll never be able to. Unless you repent. And some of you refuse repentance. Refuse. I just told you at the top part of this video that the Lord showed me a vision from when I was a teenager. Baby, I'm out of my 20s even. You would have shown me something from when I was a teenager? Obviously, that means that it has some bearing on the life that I'm living right now. Unless you wouldn't even show it to me. And some of you, this is your full-time job. To sleep with married men. To sleep with men who not married to you. I told you guys in that vision that the Lord gave me, the one that is posted on the website, the one that I talk about very frequently because there was so much information in there. You know the last thing the lady told me in that vision? Don't sleep with another man's husband. Don't sleep with another man's wife. I apologize. I mean, this day and age, another man's husband. Don't be sleep with another man. And when I woke up, I was very offended. But my offense quickly went away after I realized that there's a reason, Lord, that you told this to me. Be it because of the life that I used to live or something that you know could possibly happen in the future. But I trust that you are just and right when you speak. And I'm just going to listen. I hear what you're saying. Because can I tell you that the person that the Lord showed me with myself, it was me in the dream. The person who was with me, the person has passed away. We didn't even get good into our 20s. And the Lord has long since told me I could have taken you away with them. Because the Lord even knows that some of you won't repent, even if given the opportunity. Some of you won't change, even if presented with the opportunity. Even when you hear stuff like this, you're going to continue to go off to do the same thing. And that will be on you. But I won't withhold it. I won't withhold it. I was so sad. I was so sad driving back home, just being like, man, what, what are we doing? Like, I couldn't even put the words together. What are we doing? What are we doing? And then nobody can tell you anything. Nobody can tell you from whence they've came. 
Nobody can warn you and prevent you from doing anything. And that's the saddest part. Nobody can even tell you. You know, you're telling me that you're acting like this. And then on the same token, you're telling me that you can't even pay your bills. Well, the two of these do have a correlation, but nobody can tell you anything. And your rebuttal to me is things like, you know, I want to be outside. You're going to really be outside. When it all boils down, that's where we're going to find you. We're going to find you outside. You tell me things like you're a savage. And I'm, I, I, I'm savage what? You don't know that the devil is a savage? And he desires to sift you like wheat. Why are you making stupid statements like that? But nobody can tell you anything. Nobody can say anything to you. And guess what? They'll stop. There will come a time where nobody will say anything to you. You know why? Because like I said, it will cost them their life. I've told you guys this before. What we're coming into, the world that we're coming into living, nobody's going to tell you anything because it's going to cost them too much. Truth is going to be rare. Correction, rare. So what the message that I have to give to you is repent. You still have time. Repent. And if any of the things that I said today is you, repent and change. Changing is actually a part of repentance. You actually haven't repented if you have no intention on changing. For real. And some of you are simply going to need prayer to even begin to think about changing. And don't, I'm not talking about prayer for me. I'm talking about you need to begin to pray for a heart that is bent towards repentance. Because nothing, none of the plans that I've seen, none of the plans that I've seen, none of the things that I've seen coming up here is, I, I literally, I literally have not seen one I, I haven't seen anything good. I've seen disaster. I've told you guys this. I've seen flooding. I've seen families broken apart. And when you see, when you see and you hear God speaking like that, and then you go out into the world and you see people behaving like you, it is sad. But I do find a bit of joy because I know that God can change. A heart that really desires to change. God can change a mind. You know how I know this? Because he changed mine. And this isn't anything that anyone told me. Put some clothes on. And let's get it together because the hour is late. As always, if you have a question, ask a question. And I'll see you in the next video.